So did you guys see it? I could tell almost right away, something's busted. If you grab your auger, you see how I'm spinning it? First of all, don't stick your hands in unless the tractor's off. But when the tractor is off and it's disengaged, I should not be able to spin this. It won't spin. So you know you've got a busted shear pin somewhere. The shear pin, of course, on your auger. There's also one here on the fan. And watch the fan when I spin this. See how the fan's not turning? It should be turning. So I know it's the shear pin in the back that's busted. Let's take a look. Yep, sure enough, it's right here. See that? There's a shear pin that goes between these two, I'll call them axles, I'm not sure if that's the right word, or drive shafts. So there's a pin that goes in there, it's actually a bolt. So I'm just gonna grab one, because I keep spares. We're gonna line this back up by hand, just spin it, put the shear pin back in and we should be good to go. All right, it's pretty simple to line these back up. You just wanna turn the auger until you get these guys where they're supposed to be, and they are. Remember on this blower, there are two different, I believe it's only two different size shear bolts. They're bigger ones in the front. The ones on the fan, I think, are the same as this one. They're smaller. And I believe it's page 35 in your manual, you'll find the part numbers for those shear bolts. And if you haven't got spares, <laughs> I'd strongly recommend you get a bag of them, as I do as well. I don't buy two or three. I buy an entire bag. And you can see there, I just get them from the Kubota dealer. They're not that expensive. Well, then again, I just bought paint there last week, and I was a little surprised. Either way, she should slide through that hole, and it does. Comes with a lock washer. So how could I tell so quick that there was a pin busted? Because when I started pushing that blower, I noticed that I had snow coming out of the chute, but based on what I was seeing on the ground, there was a lot less snow coming out of the chute. So I knew something was fishy. On top of that, as I kept pushing the piles, it was like I was plowing it, because you'll see there's these big chunks of snow left at the end of the push. And that kind of tells you that it's not getting eaten, ingested, and it's not going through the augers. It's just being pushed forward. Right. Let's go clear some snow. Today's gonna to be a cleanup day. What I wanna do is I'm gonna drop the blade and I wanna scrape this out. And since I haven't had a chance to widen that driveway out, I've just been taking the blower down. I want to take the blade up and down the driveway and try to widen the driveway right out to the shoulders. I usually do that with the blade. Challenge is, that the way this winter's been going, I still don't know if this driveway's frozen yet. But there's one surefire way to find out. I'm just going to drop the rear blade and start dragging. If this driveway's not frozen, I'll start seeing gravel coming up. Then I'll know to use the blower.
So it doesn't take long to realize this driveway is still not frozen. In fact, it's trying to freeze, which is why the cutting bar on my blower keeps running into big boulders. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video or not, but it keeps stuttering and you keep hearing this bang. That's because I keep hitting boulders all the way down the driveway. And as you can see, long past the tractor, there are some areas that are reasonably okay and I'm able to scrape it no problem. And there's other areas where I'm picking up a lot of gravel. <laughs> These skid shoes are not just for looks. This is what your blower box rides on. Whatever the hardest part of the driveway is, will run under these shoes. If you've got a gravel driveway, I learned early on that you want to start your season off with these shoes lowered as much as possible. In other words, your box is as high up off the ground as possible. Minimizes how many boulders you're picking up in the driveway. Unfortunately, I assumed this driveway was going to be frozen by now. So I adjusted them this morning before I came out and I moved it back. In other words, I dropped the blower closer to the ground. It was a mistake because I keep picking up boulders. You'll also notice on these Kubota models, there's not a lot of adjustment. There's three positions, but I believe they're about a half an inch between each position, maybe three eighths of an inch. There's not a lot of room there and you've only got three. So even if you do raise it, you're not getting it off the ground too much, but every little bit helps. So we're gonna leave that maintenance for another day. And I think all we're gonna to do today is just finish blowing it out so that people can get in. I hope you'll stick around. And for those that are new to the channel, please know I'm no expert on tractors. I just I try to share things that I've learned or things that have been taught to me. And hopefully those types of things or the things that I show you will work for you on your property. And if not, I'm sure you'll figure out or you'll find a different way as to whether it's clearing the driveway, grading it, or doing any type of grapple work in the forest. You'll figure it out in time. This one was definitely a head scratcher. And I went for several winters not realizing that I wasn't using the tractor properly. So I got a call over the holidays from one of you and I appreciate the call. Very nice gentleman from out the East Coast. Brand new tractor, brand new front mount blower. He was clearing driveways and he called me and said he thinks that either the tractor's got a problem or the blower is not big enough or doesn't work properly or doesn't have enough power. There were two things he told me. One is he said he's stalled the tractor several times trying to blow at the driveway. The second thing is he said the chute on the blower keeps getting plugged and he has to keep shutting down the tractor and clearing the chute. So over a couple of discussions, we realized, and I had to laugh because I used to do and have the same questions until Tractor Man 44 got in touch with me about two winters ago after watching one of my videos. And here's what he explained to me, and he was absolutely right. You're pushing this blower through the snow in your driveway, and whether you've got six inches or a foot or two feet, this box, these augers and the fan, it can only eat or ingest so much snow at once. It's not because your tractor is underpowered or the blower is underpowered. Snow comes into the front, augers chew it up, spit it into the fan and shoots it out. If you're trying to push the blower faster than it can ingest the snow, the snow keeps accumulating because the blower can't process it as fast as you're pushing it in the front. You'll know this is happening because you can hear it in the engine your tractor's gonna to have to start working harder to try to process the snow because you're pushing so much in. So if you're pushing it too fast and the blower cannot ingest the snow at the speed or the rate of speed that you're driving through the driveway, your RPMs will keep dropping because you're loading more and more on the tractor and the blower can't process the snow. So you're basically packing snow in here. The auger and the fan is trying to process and it can't. Your tractor's gonna to start to drop an RPM. You're gonna hear it and you can see it on your dashboard. And if you continue to do it, it's no different than trying to drive up a steep hill in high gear or high range. You'll eventually stall the tractor, which I'd done several times on that B2601 as I was trying to learn how to drive it. I didn't realize <laughs> the first few times in the driveway that I couldn't make it up the steep hill in high range. It would stall on me almost every time. That's how I started to learn I had to drop into low range or medium range to get up the hill. Blower is no different. So here's what Tractor Man taught me. First thing, you're gonna pick your range based on how much snow you have and what type of snow you have. 
if you're sitting in really thick, heavy, wet packed snow and you've got a foot of it, you're probably going to want to drive in low range, which means you're not going to be going very fast. Today, with the conditions that I have, I'm going to be in medium because that, I've learned over time, works okay here. Second thing is that when you engage that blower, you're going to rev up your RPMs and for me, that's about 25, 2600 RPM. I'm going to drop the blower and now we're going to start pushing into that snow. Here we go. Now if I try to go full speed, see what's happening? I'm trying to push too much snow into that blower at the same time. So I ease off my gas pedal, or my treadle pedal. And while I'm going through the driveway, my main focus is always on this dashboard. I'm watching those RPMs, because I know as soon as they start to drop down, that I need to ease off the gas pedal, and I need to drive a little bit slower. Let me, I'm going up an incline right now. Let me go a little faster. There's what's happening, and if I keep this up, I'm going to stall the tractor. So I ease off the gas pedal. That's all I'm doing right now. And I want to keep those RPMs up at all times. That gives them, that ensures that the tractor's got lots of power to process. I'm not trying to push too much snow into that blower box. And although it may take a little bit longer to get through the driveway, I have less of a chance of snapping shear pins or stalling the tractor out. Okay, I ease off. the two things he said to be mindful of, which have always worked for me now, he said, listen to the sound of the engine, because it'll tell you right away if you're pushing too hard or too fast, and watch your RPMs. After you get used to it, and you get a little experience behind you, you won't have to look at your RPMs anymore. You'll just be able to know by the sound of the engine that you're pushing too fast. I hope you folks have found that helpful. Another tip for you good folks, if you park your tractor outside, you're going to find that in really cold weather, this pedal is going to stick. And there's a grease circ under there and I keep it greased. But what will happen is you're going to put it in gear after you've got it warmed up, you're going to drive forward and when you release the pedal, it's going to stay down and you're going to keep driving. Be really mindful of that, especially, especially if you've got something in front of you. So after you've warmed the tractor and before you put it in gear and go forward, play with the pedal. Make sure that it's coming back to the neutral before you drive away. Oh, and if your tractor lives outside like mine, you want to make sure you clean out this blower before you put it away for the day and tarp it. <laughs> it's one of those mistakes you'll only make once, I promise. <laughs> well, that's gonna be a wrap for today. Not an exciting day, but I got it cleared out as much as I needed to. We'll save the widening for another day. I hope some of the information today you found helpful or at least informative, especially if you're new at tractors. Thank you for sticking around. Have a great week with your families. Please be kind to each other. I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter and you've been watching GP Outdoors. Cheers. <laughs>